integrate cosine to the fifth power of t over the square root of sine t solution. So we have powers of sine and cosine, and so whenever you have an odd power of a sine or a cosine, you want to save a copy of that power. So a good first step maybe would be to write this as cosine to the fourth of t over the square root of sine t, and then factor out a copy of cosine. And the reason we do this is because, again, whenever you have powers of sine and cosine, that's a good strategy. Another reason that we might take this approach is that if you kind of look at this, you can kind of tell that u equals sine t is your only good choice. Because if you let u equal cosine, its derivative is negative sine, and there's no negative sine to be found uh, in the numerator. But if you let u equal sine, the derivative of sine is cosine t. And so that does appear in the numerator. All right, so we saved a copy of sine, of cosine. And so you see our du is going to be right here. du is cosine t dt. So the only thing left to deal with is this cosine to the fourth power. So because u is equal to sine, we need to rewrite that in a nice way. So recall that cosine squared of t is equal to 1 minus sine squared of t. So what we can do here is we can write uh, cosine to the fourth power as 1 minus sine squared of t squared. And then here we have square root of sine t and then cosine t dt. And hopefully this makes sense because if you have cosine to the fourth of t, you can write it as cosine squared t squared. And then you see you replace the squared, the cosine squared, with one minus sine squared. So we end up with, with this. So quick recap from the beginning. You have powers of sine and cosine. Cosine is to the fifth power, so you save a copy of cosine. And then you let u be the other one. We get to this point here where we still have a cosine to the fourth power. It needs to be a sine because u is equal to sine. So this needs to be in terms of sine, so we rewrite it. At this point, we're ready to make our substitution. Let me switch colors here. So this is going to be equal to parentheses 1 minus u squared squared over the square root of u. And what's left all of this that's left is simply du. So now we just have to break this up. So if you have a minus b squared, that's equal to the first one squared minus 2 times the first times the second plus the last one squared. Just an easy way to memorize it. So here, you square the 1, so you just get 1, minus you multiply these two, and you double it, so minus 2u squared plus, and then you square the last one, so it'll just be u to the fourth. On the bottom, we have the square root, and we still have to break things up. So it's a good idea, maybe, to write it as u to the one-half, and then we have our du. Let's keep going. This is equal to, I'll do it over here, it's 1 over u, minus 2u squared over u to the 1 half, so that's a one-half, I messed up there, <laughs> plus u to the fourth over u to the one-half. I have no idea where I got that u from. I said one over u, what's going on, where? <laughs> it's one over u to the one-half, and then minus two u squared over u to the one-half, and then u to the fourth over u to the one-half. Okay, so this one we can bring up, so it'll become u to the negative one-half, so that's good. Minus two... Okay, we have u squared over u to the one-half. So think of u squared as u to the four-halves. So we have u to the four-halves over u to the one-half. So what you do now is you subtract the exponents. Four-halves minus one-half is three-halves. Same thing here. We have u to the fourth over u to the one-half. Think of it as u to the eight-halves over u to the one-half. So 8 half minus 1 halves is 7 halves. This problem is a lot messier than I thought it would be. And then du. I thought it was going to be like, you know, a one minute video. 
<laughs> no. Um, okay, everything looks okay. Let's go ahead and integrate. We're just going to use the power rule straight through. This is equal to. So adding 1 to negative 1 half gives us 1 half. Because you're supposed to add 1. And then you're supposed to divide by 1 half. But when you divide by 1 half, you really multiply by 2. So 2. Minus 2. U to the, let's see, 3 halves plus 1 is really 3 halves plus 2 halves. So 5 halves. But then dividing by 5 halves is the same thing as multiplying by 2 fifths. Put this in parentheses. Plus u to the, so 7 halves plus 1 is 9 halves. And then again, dividing by 9 halves is the same thing as multiplying by 2 ninths. And we have our plus and our c. Wow, I already forgot what u was. I'm going to go back up and, and look. <laughs> so u was sine t. Ridiculous. Okay, so all we do now is replace all of the u's with sines. So this is 2. Um, this u to the 1 half, let's be fancy, let's turn it into a square root just because we can. So sine t minus 4 fifths, and this is sine to the 5 halves t plus 2 ninths sine to the 9 halves t plus c. Yikes! So that would be the final answer to this problem. Wow, much, much uh, more challenging than I thought it would be. I didn't think this problem uh, would take this long. And just a quick recap from the beginning. The most important thing is that you know how to start the problem. So two methods to approach it. Method one is, you know, u can't be cosine because if your u is cosine, the derivative is negative sine, and there's no negative sign up here. So really your only logical hope is to let u be equal to sine. Method two, you know you have an odd power of cosine. So the rule is, if you have powers of sine and cosine, a good strategy is to save a copy of the odd one. So we did that by factoring out a cosine. Notice cosine times cosine to the fourth is cosine to the fifth. So because we save a copy of cosine, that means u is the other one, right? And then you say, okay, u is the other one, but we still have this. All right, so now we have to use identities to write it like this. And now we're in a good place to make the substitution. So that's the general strategy that typically works when you have powers of sine and cosine. I hope this video has been helpful.